Welcome to the Michigan Golfer Show. Join us each week as we explore the people, the places, and the events that shape our, our great game. Hi, today I'm, I'm with a, a special guest, uh, Michael Breed, and let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, you're going to take my job, you keep saying it that well. <laughs> Michael is here from uh, the Golf Channel, and he's here at the West Michigan Golf Show, where, yeah. it, where we're falling, the stats are falling apart, but other than that. <laughs> That's what your let's do this does, it starts reverberating through, Jack. Michael has been uh, talking uh, yesterday, today, and I've never seen a guy who worked so hard and pleased so many people. Michael, congratulations. Well, thank you, and congratulations to you too, Jack, all of your success. It's, it's an honor to be able to sit here and chat with you. Well, you've been in the, in the golf business for a long time as a teacher. How has it changed? Wow, you know, it, I think technology has really uh, become a big thing in the game of golf and, and certainly in instruction over the last, say, five to eight years. Um, but ultimately, I think the beauty of the game of golf is sharing wisdom from time past. And what I love about golf and really golf instruction is that we take information from a Horton Smith or a Bobby Locke and we pass that down the line and it ends up uh, uh, to go into a Butch Harmon and then it goes to a Jason Gus and a Rick Smith and people that are you know out in this area and and what I love about this game is that we're just passing along information about how to help people play better golf. Well, I think one person you helped was Doug LaBelle, who is uh, a Michigander. That's exactly right. Doug and I worked together for a long, long time. He's a great guy and a very talented player, no doubt. Well, when I uh, started uh, in golf a very, very long time ago, about the only teaching aid seemed to be the Medicus. <laughs> and now it just exploded. What all, what all do you have besides track man and computering and... What's going on in all the well, teaching I think, aids? I think, well, I think, I think you've got a, a bunch of things that are happening. One, we're sort of in a do-it-yourself society now where, you know, people are trying to figure it out all by themselves. And with the access that people have by using the cell phone, what that phone, that smartphone can do now, it's incredible what an individual can do to help themselves, whether it's with the Sky Pro that kind of attaches to your shaft and tells you what, how fast the club head's going and what the angle of the shaft is, the angle of approach, all that stuff. People can really learn a lot now with this technology and it's very understandable. I think that what we're seeing is there's a lot of people that are wanting to help themselves get better. There's also a tremendous opportunity from a marketing standpoint for people to, to invent devices that are going to help people improve. And, and um, you know, we've seen Martin Chuck with the Tour Striker, who's had a phenomenal, uh, who's had phenomenal success with that. And I think that, you know, we're starting to see more devices get out there and more ways for people to improve their game. Do you think people take, are taking a lot more lessons now? I think the people that take lessons are taking more lessons. I think 80% of the market doesn't take lessons. But what I do think is that people are going to the internet, they're, they're researching how to play better golf. So I think while they're not necessarily paying for a, a, a golf lesson, as you and I would know a golf lesson, what they are doing is they're trying to figure out how to play the game by use of uh, their smartphone or the computer or whatever. Now you've been on Golf Channel for what seven years? Yeah, actually, in our we just started our eighth season. Yeah, thank you for knowing that. Something like eighty, something like eighty countries. We're in just a, we're now in eighty four countries. Yeah, we just did our three hundredth show, which is hard to even imagine. But how did it start? The 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 show itself started with an idea that I had. Um, I was calling it a new breed of golf, and I started uh, that back in about 2000 and I was doing some work for Golf Channel at the time but I was working on this sort of this golf show uh, in sort of my part time they came to me and asked me for an idea for a show and I said you know it just so happens I've got an idea for a show and I handed them the pilot to it and six short years later they picked it up and uh, the rest is history now you're in uh, live in the New York area, yes. New York area, right? Yes. The show is in Orlando. Yep. So how do you how do you do that? Well, thank God for a company called JetBlue. 
<laughs> so I'm on a JetBlue flight pretty regularly. Um, three times a month I go down there. I get one one Monday off a month that I'll, I'll stay home. But three out of four Mondays I'm I'm in Orlando and I fly down on a Sunday and then fly back home on a on a Monday night. How has the show changed from the beginning? Uh, it's changed in a in a couple of different ways. I think first of all I think television is changing. Um, the 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 way people process information now is is a little bit different. We used to, when the show first started, we used to take a lot of phone calls. We've stopped taking phone calls. We still have the, the interaction from, from uh, the viewer. We still take the, the email questions. But really, it's changed with the social media. The social media has exploded. And people want to see their, their Twitter questions get asked or their Facebook posts, and, and they want to connect. The other way it's changed is what we're doing away from the show. So we used to have all the content was just on the show. Now we have a, a ton of content on golfchannel.com where people can get their instruction when they want to get their instruction. So it's, it's changed a couple different ways. And I would say the last way it's changed is a lot of people are now DVRing the show and watching it when they want to, want, when they want to watch it rather than watching it at 7 o'clock on a Monday night. Now, what do you now up from these 80 countries? Do you get questions from? What kind of questions do you get? You know, we get a ton of questions from Canada, um, particularly people more than that saying to us, "Hey, I wish you would tell us how to play left-handed." Canada has 15 percent of their market is left-handed. In the U.S., it's about 10 percent that's that's left-handed. So we get a lot of questions from Canada and all over the world. But where we're getting a ton of questions nowadays is Australia. We just were picked up in Australia a couple of years ago and we're getting a, an inordinate number of questions from Australia. Obviously Australia is a hotbed of golf and we're well aware of the great uh, players that have come from Australia. Um, but what we get questions from Vietnam. Mike DeVries obviously built, has built a golf course over there. We know Mike very well. Um, his he can speak to what's going on uh, in Asia and what's happening over, particularly in, in Vietnam. We get a lot of questions from, from that part of the world as well. Well, the left-handers in Canada, I understand, it's hockey. That's exactly <laughs> right. hockey really? That's exactly right. And uh, I used to cover the Red Wings for a long time, yeah. and the uh, general manager, Jack Adams, uh, their training would be up at Sault Ste. Marie, and he had them go out and play golf in the afternoon because he thought that that was good for them, <laughs> and they loved it. <laughs> I'm sure they did. <laughs> and, and, and they have that short you know, they, they just come through at the hip, it's like a slap shot. Yeah, that's exactly right. And also, by the way, that drill of, of practicing with a hockey stick is great for impact. It, it gets you away from flipping that club a little early and helps. If you at home want to improve your game, get yourself a hockey stick and go out there and make some swings with a hockey stick, and you'll hit the ball a little bit farther and hang on to that, that power, that lag that we're so desperately seeking. I love that because well, that's all the commercials you see are... Uh, you know, more distance, more distance, more distance. See, they've even got Boeing in on it now. <laughs> Listen, there's a long line of people that want to hit the ball farther. And by the way, I know I'm in that line. I imagine you're standing in that line too. Sure, I go to the farthest forward tee, and then I then I go up from there. Yep. <laughs> tee it forward and then some. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so what else is happening? How do how do you how do you manage all this, this busy life that you've got? You know, you know um, I think obviously time management is a really important thing. I think one of the good things is that I've, I've surrounded myself with very talented people and you know how, how this is. You can't get anywhere in life without uh, having really talented people around. So I have that at my academy. Um, my wife is also a, a great influence in my in my career. She's she's um, extremely helpful in organizing flights and rental cars and doing all the things that I would have. Talking to to Terry Moore, you know about organizing, having me come out here. So she's instrumental in all this. But um, you know this, you, you can't get anywhere without the assist of others. And I'm very very well aware of the assist that that I get on a daily basis from all the very talented people that are around me. Well, do they want you in Sydney and then? Melbourne and, and you know interestingly uh, they have reached out 
and um, they're they're asking for me to come down there and do that. I've never had a chance to get down there, so it's something that I'm very interested in doing. Yeah, I just need to make sure that they can pay for my wife and kids to make the trip too. Why not? <laughs> well, listen, you know what? That's exactly right. It's a it's a ticket for four. <laughs> well, I think that they can they can afford that. I hope they so. They can put you on Qantas and uh, be you be class out. On yeah. Qantas too, Jackie. Uh, well, of course. <laughs> or you've got uh, one of the uh, one of the pros you work with that has a private plane. Yeah. You know. Yep. Yeah. Somebody yeah. 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 <laughs> well, it's been great talking with you, Michael. Nice and you well. are uh, the number one guy on the Golf Channel. I appreciate that. It's a pleasure to sit with you as well. All the things you've done in your career, uh, you're an inspiration to many in the business. And obviously, those of us that in the, are in this, we look up to you with high regard. So thank you for all you've done. Thank you. Good talking with you, and we'll be looking at you to let's do it. <laughs> and well even Home Depot is using know, that now. That? <laughs> and Taco Bell is doing it too. It's a great compliment. <laughs> we got a lot of golfers. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Michael. Wonderful. Thank you.